Sessions. I was out in the fields one evening, watching the stars when I saw something strange in the sky. It was a glowing object moving slowly across the horizon. At first I thought it was a plane, but as it came closer, I realized it was like nothing I had ever seen before. The object was a disc shape with bright lights flashing around its edges. It made no noise as it hovered in the air, just a few hundred feet above me. I could not take my eyes off it, mesmerized by the sight. Suddenly, the object shot off into the distance, faster than anything I had ever seen. I watched it until it disappeared from view, still unable to believe what I had just witnessed. The next day, I told my friends and family about what I had seen, but they just laughed it off as a trick of the light. But I knew what I had seen, and I could not shake the feeling that something was off. Over the next few days, I began to notice strange things happening around me. My phone would ring, but when I answered, there was nobody there. My TV would turn on by itself, and the channels would change randomly. I even woke up one night to find that my bed had been moved across the room. And I started to feel like I was being watched, and I could not shake the feeling that it had something to do with the strange object that I had seen in the sky. But whenever I tried to talk about it, people would just look at me like I was crazy. Now one night, I woke up to a strange noise coming from outside my house. I went to investigate, and as I opened the door, I saw the object hovering just above the trees in my backyard. I froze, unsure what to do. As I watched, a beam of light shot out from the bottom of the object and hit the ground. I could see figures moving around in the light, but I could not make out any details. Suddenly the beam disappeared, and the object shot off into the distance once again. I knew then that I had to find out what was going on. I started to research into UFO sightings, trying to find any information that could help me understand what I had seen. But the more I looked into it, the more I realized how little we really knew about the universe. I started to feel like I was losing my mind, but I could not stop thinking about the object and what it might mean. I began to have strange dreams where I was taken aboard the object and shown things that I could not understand. One night, I woke up to find myself standing outside in my backyard. The object was hovering just above me, and I could see figures moving around inside. I felt a strange sensation like I was being pulled towards the object. Before I knew it, I was inside the object, surrounded by bright lights and strange machinery. I could see figures moving around, but they looked almost inhuman, with strange proportions and glowing eyes. I tried to move, but I was paralyzed, unable to control my body. The figures approached me, and I could feel something probing my mind, searching for something. Suddenly, I was back in my own body, lying in my backyard. The object was gone, and the sun was just beginning to rise. Now, I never saw the object again, but the experience stayed with me for years. I never told anyone about what had happened, afraid that they would think I was crazy. But I knew what I had seen, and I couldn't shake that feeling. The wind howled through the dark forest as a group of friends made their way deeper into the unknown. They had heard rumors of strange occurrences in the area, and being thrill seekers, they were excited to investigate. As they wandered through the forest, they stumbled upon an unusual clearing. In the center of the clearing stood a large metallic object that seemed to glow with an otherworldly light. As they approached, they realized it was a spaceship, 
unlike anything they had ever seen before. And suddenly, a bright light enveloped them, and they were lifted off the ground and pulled inside the ship. The friends were disoriented as they found themselves in a sterile, white room. They tried to scream, but their voices were silenced by the deafening sound of the ship's engines. As they regained their composure, they noticed they were not alone. Standing before them was an alien, unlike anything they had ever seen before. The creature had a lanky frame, large black eyes, and tentacle-like appendages for arms. The friends were frozen in fear as the alien approached them. They expected to be killed, but instead, the alien communicated with them telepathically. It told them that it had been observing Earth for centuries, and that humanity's destructive tendencies had piqued its interest. The alien offered to take the friends on a journey through the galaxy, showing them wonders beyond their wildest dreams. They hesitated at first, but their curiosity got the better of them, and they accepted the offer. As they traveled through the stars, they saw incredible sights, planets made entirely of crystal, stars that sang like sirens, and galaxies so massive they defied comprehension. But as they journeyed further, they began to realize that something was wrong. The aliens' intentions were not pure. It was using them as pawns for a greater game. The friends were being used to help the alien carry out its plans of intergalactic conquest. Realizing that they were in grave danger, the friends hatched a plan to escape. Using their knowledge of the ship, they overpowered the alien and took control of the vessel. They set a course back to Earth, but the alien was not so easily defeated. It pursued them, sending out waves of psychic energy that threatened to overwhelm them. The friends fought back with all their strength, but the alien's power was too great. Just as it seemed all was lost, they were saved by an unexpected hero. A fleet of Earth's own spacecrafts had been sent to investigate the strange activity in the area, and they intercepted the alien just in time. The friends were returned safely to Earth, but they would never forget their encounter with the alien. It had changed them forever, and they were left wondering what other horrors lay waiting beyond the stars. In a small royal town, a group of adventurous kids decided to explore an old abandoned barn that was rumored to be haunted. They were intrigued by the possibility of discovering something out of the ordinary and were thrilled to spend the afternoon on an adventure. As they approached the old barn, they noticed that it was in a state of disrepair. The wooden planks were rotting and the roof was caving in, but as they got closer, they noticed something strange. There was a large metal object inside the barn that looked like a spaceship. The kids were in disbelief, but they decided to investigate further. As they got closer to the spaceship, they noticed that it was damaged. There were large holes in the metal and strange green liquid seeping out. But before they could examine it further, they heard something moving around inside the barn. The kids were petrified, but they decided to search around to see if anyone or anything was inside the barn. As they walked through the dark and eerie space, they began to feel like they were being watched. Suddenly, one of the kids vanished into thin air, leaving the rest of the group in a state of panic. They continued to search for their missing friend but one by one, each of the kids began to disappear. The shuffling noises became louder and more aggressive, and it was clear that something dangerous was lurking in the shadows. As the last remaining kid was about to give up hope, the spaceship suddenly started to hum and glow. Before he knew it, the spaceship lifted off the ground and took off into the night sky. But as the kid watched in awe, 
He noticed that his missing friends were on board of the spaceship, trapped inside with no way to escape. The kid was left alone in the dark, abandoned barn with no way to contact anyone for help. He knew that he had to find a way to rescue his friends before it was too late. He searched through the barn, looking for any clues or signs of where the spaceship had gone. After what seemed like hours of searching, he finally found a hidden door in the back of the barn, and as he opened it, he was hit with a blinding light and was transported into the spaceship. Inside, he found his friends in a state of shock, unable to move or speak. But as he approached them, he noticed that they were covered in a strange green liquid, and their eyes had a strange, otherworldly glow. The kid realized his friends had been taken by an alien force, and they were now under his control. He knew that he had to act fast before it was too late. As he looked around the spaceship, he noticed that there was a control panel that looked similar to the one in his favorite video game. So he quickly took a seat and started to press the buttons, hoping that he could find a way to stop the spaceship from taking his friends any further. After a few moments of trial and error, he found a button that caused the spaceship to come to a sudden stop. The spaceship started to shake, and the green liquid started to evaporate from his friends' bodies. As they slowly came to, they thanked the kid for saving their lives. They had no memory of what had happened, but they knew that they had been under some kind of alien control. Together, the group made their way back to the abandoned barn and destroyed the spaceship, hoping that it would never fall into the wrong hands. From that day on, the kids never forgot their terrifying encounter with the alien spaceship. They knew that they had been lucky to survive, but they also knew that there were many mysteries to the universe that they had yet to discover. Once, there was an old farmer named George who lived in a small town in the middle of nowhere. George had lived in this town his entire life, and he knew every inch of the land like the back of his hand. George had always been curious about the world beyond his small town, but he had never had the opportunity to travel very far. One night, as George was driving his old pickup truck back from a nearby town, he saw something strange in the sky. It was a bright light that moved in an erratic pattern. George had seen a lot of strange things in his time, but he had never seen anything like this before. As he drove, George kept his eyes fixed on the strange light. It seemed to be getting closer and closer. Soon, he realized that it was heading in the same direction as his truck. As the light got closer, George could see that it was a strange object that he had never seen before. George's curiosity got the best of him, and he decided to follow the object. He drove his truck as fast as he could, but the object was always just out of reach. It seemed to be playing a game of cat and mouse with him. As he chased the object, George's mind began to wander. He wondered what the object was where it came from, and what it wanted, he felt a strange sense of unease, as if he was being watched by something beyond his understanding. After several hours of driving, the object finally stopped in a large, open field. George parked his truck and got out, cautiously approaching the object. It was unlike anything he had ever seen before. It was a metallic, disc-shaped object that hovered silently in the air. George stood there, staring at the object, wondering what to do next. Suddenly, he heard a strange noise behind him. He turned around and saw a group of figures emerging from the shadows. They were tall, thin, and had large, black eyes. George had heard stories of alien sightings before, 
but he had never believed them until now. The creatures approached George, and he felt a strange sensation wash over him. It was as if his mind was being invaded by something beyond his understanding. He tried to fight back, but the creatures were too strong. They probed his mind, searching for something. After what seemed like an eternity, the creatures finally retreated. George left standing there in the field, feeling confused and scared. He did not know what had just happened, but he knew that he had to get out of there. As he drove away, George felt a sense of relief wash over him. He had survived the encounter, but he knew that he would never be the same again. He wondered what the creatures wanted and why they had chosen him. He knew that he would never find the answers, but he was determined to keep looking. From that day on, George became obsessed with UFO sightings. He spent every waking moment reading books, watching documentaries, and talking to people about their experiences. He became a fixture in the UFO community and was known as a leading expert on the subject. But despite his knowledge and expertise, George was never able to shake the feeling of unease that had taken hold of him that night in the field. He knew that the universe was a vast and mysterious place, and that there were things out there that he could never understand. As he grew older, George became more and more isolated. He spent most of his time alone, poring over old files and documents, searching for the answers that had eluded him for so long. He knew that he would never find them, but he could not stop looking. One day, George disappeared. His old pickup truck was found on the side of the road, abandoned. It was a quiet autumn evening in the small town of Millfield. The trees were shedding their leaves and creating a soft rustling sound as the wind blew through their branches. Most of the residents were already home, enjoying a warm cup of tea or reading a book before going to bed. But then, the peaceful night was shattered by a strange and eerie noise. At first, it sounded like a low rumble, like distant thunder, but as it got closer, the noise became louder and more intense. People started to peek out of their windows, trying to figure out what was happening. Then they saw it, a bright and glowing object hovering in the sky. It was a flying saucer, unmistakably alien in appearance. The object was huge, much larger than any plane or helicopter anyone had ever seen. It was glowing with an otherworldly light, casting an eerie and green glow on everything below it. The townspeople were terrified unsure what to do or where to go. Some people ran outside to get a better look, while others locked themselves inside their homes, hoping the object would disappear. As the saucer hovered in the sky, it started to emit strange and pulsating noises. The sound was like nothing anyone had ever heard before, a strange, hypnotic melody that seemed to burrow its way into the minds of those who heard it. The townspeople began to feel a sense of dread and unease, as if the strange sound was affecting their thoughts and emotions. Suddenly, the saucer began to descend, slowly and steadily, until it was hovering just a few feet above the ground. The townspeople could see strange markings on the surface of the saucer, glowing with an otherworldly light. The markings were undecipherable and they seemed to shift and change as people looked at them. Then, a beam of light shot out from the bottom of the saucer, illuminating the ground below. People screamed in terror, unsure of what was happening. The beam of light started to move, scanning the ground as it went. It moved across the town, sweeping across the buildings and streets, as if it were looking for something. As the beam of light approached a small group of people, 
who had gathered in the town square, it suddenly stopped. The light intensified, bathing the group in a blinding glow. Then, as suddenly as it had appeared, the light disappeared, leaving the group standing in the square, dazed and confused. For the next few minutes, the saucer remained stationary, hovering above the town like a sinister presence. The townspeople watched in fear and awe, wondering what would happen next. And suddenly, the saucer shot into the air, disappearing into the night sky as quickly as it had come. In the aftermath of the sighting, the town was in chaos. The local authorities tried to downplay the incident, claiming it was a weather balloon or a military experiment, but the people knew what they had seen and they were terrified. Rumors and conspiracy theories began to spread, with some claiming that the government was hiding the truth about the incident. As the weeks and months passed, strange things began to happen in Millfield. People reported bizarre sightings, strange occurrences, and unexplained phenomena. Some claimed to have been visited by strange beings in the middle of the night while others reported strange markings on their bodies. The town became a hot spot for paranormal investigators, conspiracy theorists, and curious visitors. But for the residents of Millfield, life would never be the same. The UFO sighting had left a permanent mark on the town, a scar that would never fully heal. The fear and uncertainty that had gripped the town that night had never truly gone away and the people of Millfield remained forever in awe of that UFO encounter. It was a dark and stormy night when a group of kids from St. Mary's Elementary School boarded a yellow school bus for the field trip to their local planetarium. The bus driver, Mr. Johnson, drove down a winding country road as the rain poured down heavily. The kids were excited and chatted among themselves, while Mr. Johnson kept his eyes on the road. As they traveled deeper into the countryside, the road became narrower and more treacherous. The trees on either side of the road loomed over the bus, their branches brushing against the windows, casting eerie shadows on the faces of the children. Suddenly, a bright light appeared in the sky, hovering above the bus. The children looked up in awe and gasped as they saw a UFO in the shape of a saucer. Mr. Johnson slammed on the brakes, bringing the bus to a screeching halt. The children screamed in fear as the UFO began to follow the bus, his bright lights blinding them. Mr. Johnson tried to start the engine, but it wouldn't turn over. The lights on the bus flickered and the radio crackled with static. The children huddled together, clutching each other in terror as the UFO continued to hover over them. The UFO moved closer to the bus, and the children could see the strange otherworldly creatures peering down at them through the windows. Their eyes glowed in the dark and their long, spindly fingers tapped on the glass. The bus was now surrounded by a strange unearthly glow. The children could hear strange noises coming from the UFO, and they felt as if they were being pulled towards it. Mr. Johnson frantically tried to start the engine, but it was no use. The bus was completely immobilized. Just as it seemed like all hope was lost, the UFO suddenly vanished into thin air. The children looked around in confusion, and Mr. Johnson started the engine. The bus lurched forward, and they continued on their journey to the planetarium. When they arrived, the children were still in shock from what had happened. They told the staff at the planetarium about the UFO, but they were met with skepticism. The staff brushed off their claims, telling them that it was probably just a trick of the light or meteor. The children knew what they had seen, and they could not shake that feeling that they had experienced something truly out of the ordinary that night. 